Hi everybody, it's Az here from Heel vs. Babyface with my first Az Chats of 2015. I was going to simply do an Imperator LFR video to kind of um, compare and give out mechanics to people that just deal with the LFR stuff. And now, after actually fighting it, um, have decided to turn this into an Az Chats. And the reason why is there are a few things that we need to discuss. There are a few things about the Luffera that we really need to discuss without just doing the the regular ranting that, you know, it's it's a pox on humanity and all that kind of stuff, which we all know it is. Um, so if you're new to Az Chat's types of videos, they are more podcasty than they are um, visual. However, they are now becoming more visual Anyway, so you can still get the same benefit from the video if you're not watching the screen. So if you've got stuff to do around the house, you know, clean up your cat's shit from the floor in your bedroom because it doesn't want to go outside because it's cold and poops everywhere. You get the drift. Then you can do that, crank up the volume in the background and still hear everything that's going on. Or if you want to sit at your desk, transfixed, hypnotized unable to move, then you'll still get some benefit from it as well because there'll be visual and there'll be audio feasts for everything. Ooh, for the senses. Sensory overdrive. Um, right, so <laughs> the main kind of talking point is has LFR got even more pedestrian than it was in the previous expansion? Little brief, as I do, I procrastinate in these videos. Little brief overview of LFR. LFR actually came into play in the Dragon Soul patch in Cataclysm. That's when it first came in. They wanted, uh, and they were looking at uh, a way to allow people who hadn't seen the content, the current raiding content, to do it. Um, but obviously be able to complete it so they could see it all. And not necessarily get the the benefits that you would um, from, say, regular raiding or heroic raiding. Um, which actually, I think, she had the same gear by then. So it wouldn't have mattered which one you did. And of course, I, I'm sort of going to refer to these in today's uh, concepts. Because now it's LFR, normal, heroic, mythic. So that's the way that I'm going to be reflecting on it as opposed to saying, well, it's heroic back then, which, of course, would have been mythic now. That was just going to get too confusing. So people who are relatively new to the game will understand or potentially understand what level of content I am talking about. Now, once upon a time, oh, when Sleeping Beauty was a slumber with drool coming up the side of her mouth and Prince Charming was leaning over her, ready to plant his lips. That, that's rape. That is non-consensual sexual content at the very at the very word, the very best for him, if there is such a best thing. That is sexual assault, Prince Charming. She never asked. Okay, that's another video. Right, tomorrow's video. Pen out. Prince Charming is a rapist. Okay, uh, right, that's that done. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> once upon a time, uh, before we had LFR and all these other things, um, we used to do something called pagging. And pugging is where somebody would uh, get together a group of random peoples, and those random peoples, through whichever means, whether it was gear score check, a lot of people have just gone, hey, as they reminisce. It was horrible, wasn't it? Uh, whether it be a gear score check or, as we have it now, item level or achievement. That used to be a criteria for um, for getting into a pug. Uh, do you want to pug uh, Alduar? Yes, I do. Link the achievement that you have got, you know, to X, X amount of distance within it. Stuff like that. So that's how it used to operate. Somebody would get together a ragtag group of people, kind of like the Expendables, but with definitely more blood. Because <laughs> some of those conversations were visceral. Wow. If you ever, if you ever got there. Oh my God. It was like low self-esteem versus high ego. Um, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere in these groups. But you would get this ragtag group of people and you would attempt to, to go through 
uh, as many bosses as possible. The best example I can give for this is ICC. Ice Crown Citadel. That used to be a really decent, puggable place in as much as you could progress a relatively good distance. A lot of the time when it first started, you would complete the first wing, you'd go up to Sarfang, and then after Sarfang, uh, it would fall apart because people would get the token and run away. Um, but sometimes you could get yourself in a good pug where you could do Sarfang, and then you could do Plague Wing, and if the group was even you know, even better, you'd go off and you'd do Blood Wing. And if you could sort of like walk out with those three wings done, you were like, woo hoo 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 That was some pretty hefty stuff. And I was uh, fortunate enough to be in a couple of pugs where we actually got to Lich King as well. Didn't do it, admittedly, but we got to Lich King. And when I when I eventually got my Lich King kill, it was in a, in a, a guild and it was in a, a proper raid. Um, but yeah, this is what we used to do before LFR. LFR came in and um, we didn't quite know what to make of it at first. It seemed as if it was a, a pretty good idea. I'm not going to rag on Blizzard for it. I mean, I understand. I, I could look at this from two different perspectives here. I could, I could be the generous person and I could uh, say, look, I understand that Blizzard want people to see their content their raid content because a lot of work does go into the raiding content and um i am absolutely adoring high mall raiding at the moment whether it be normal or heroic i'm loving it i think the fights are absolutely fantastic i love the mechanics i think tectus is one of the, the best fights they've ever created i just love the whole the whole ethos of that um Kora is a decent fight that's something pretty new before and imperator who we see now he uh he in himself is a is a is a, a very uh, nuanced fight there is a lot a lot of coordination in this fight when you're doing a heroic level and that's the sort of level of fighting and that's sort of the sort of level of raiding which is really tingling my bones or boners uh, at the moment <laughs> whichever one it's tingling trust me tingling many parts um so when lfr first came in we were sort of like uh, unsure quite what to make of it um lots of there were lots of horrible things going on lots of ninja looting lots of stuff like that because uh, a lot of people were working off trust they weren't quite understanding that uh sorry i'm, I'm talking about pugs again not lfr by the way um, you know, you're kind of like working off, um, no, no, sorry, I'm talking totally about LFR. Sorry, yeah, yeah, I'm talking about LFR. People were ninja looting thick pieces that, that weren't, uh, required for them, and then they were trading them to their friends, so, let's say a dagger dropped, uh, a rogue would need on the dagger, spellcaster dagger, uh, would need on it, and then give it to their buddy, who was, uh, you know, who's a warlock or whatever. Lots of kind of, uh, dodgy shenanigans going on with loot. So that didn't, um, you know, sort of uh, drape it in finery to start off with, which was a wee bit of a shame. And uh, and then we soon kind of realised the the implications of, of, of LFR. And if I could go back to the other point, I said that I could look at this two ways, couldn't I? Firstly, of course, Blizzard want to, uh, people to, to view their raiding content, and then I went off at a tangent. Secondly... Uh, I could look at it in a little bit of a more cynical way and say their ego demands that people see their content. Uh, that's a that's a comment point down below. You tell me. Uh, are, are, Blizzard more, are Blizzard more altruistic? Are they wanting everybody to see the content because they think everyone deserves to see the content? Or are, are, are you know, is it a little bit more of an ego thing? Are they just like, I spent all this time creating these raids. Why should only 5% of people see it? And I want everybody. I want everybody to garnish me with love and affection and petals and flowers and ditty bags. You know, is it that sort of, is it that sort of level of narcissism uh, going on? comments down below let me know what you think uh so yeah it wasn't too long before we realized that lfr was a little bit more to toxic uh, and not just toxic as regards to um the way that it was affecting players the way it was affecting communication between players suddenly as i just mentioned earlier in the video it became a clash of egos lots of people playing with low self-esteem you know with self-esteem issues uh the on that's just a fact the online gaming system is full of them absolutely f chock 
full of people with self-esteem issues. I've got self-esteem issues. I don't, I don't particularly, you know, think myself high or mighty at all. I just deal with it. I just, you know, kind of like get through it. I understand that I've got, um, I do have, you know, uh, self-issues. and uh, But I, you know, you just sort of learn to deal with it. Um, and then you have uh, those people combined with high egos because they're, they're behind a keyboard. Um, they're in a, a situation where so nobody can see them, nobody can touch them, uh, nobody can challenge them uh, person to person. So they become very egotistical and they become very um, disruptive with the way that they communicate and they become very bolshy. And if we're talking about it in psychological terms, it's what you kind of call free child, where you act the way that you would act, let's say, if you'd had a couple of drinks. You lose your inhibition. You lose your inhibition and you sort of let that free child come out. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And that's what it turns... That's what you kind of get. And when you have multiple people in this situation, it just leads to visceral conversation. But there was another knock-on effect. And there was a knock-on effect, which I don't know if Blizzard quite realized would happen, but it definitely happened. And that was the fact that it actually started to have a huge impact on raiding and raiding guilds. Because Blizzard had decided to go down a more casual way, and I say the word casual not, not in a, a dirty word, but I say the word casual in a way that they wanted more people to become active in events. You know, so I could log on to the World of Warcraft and instead of me saying I'm looking for a tank, a healer and two more DPS to go and run this dungeon, you now had your dungeon finder. You know, they wanted things to be a lot more simplified in that manner so people didn't have to, uh, inverted commas, waste time standing in, in cities, capital cities, trying to get groups together. They could queue up and they could be out in the big wide world and do whatever they still needed to do, and then the queue would pop and boom, they'd go off and do what they needed to do. But the problem was, uh, people were still sat in the capital cities, people still weren't going out into the world, they were just literally logging on, queuing up, <sighs> falling asleep. And uh, what we were finding with raiding guilds, were people were saying, well I've seen the content. I've seen the content, so what is even the point of me joining a raiding guild? Why would I go through night after night of wipes on bosses and progressionary raiding when I've seen the Imperator fight? I've seen the Deathwing fight. You know, I've seen... Um, who was the final boss in... Uh, I think Majig of the Emperors. Whatever Majiggy. From Mogushan Vaults. Or Lei Shen in Throne of Thunder. Why would you go through all that pro of, of that process of raiding when you've done it in LFR? You know? And you could, there's a logic, there is a twisted logic behind that. You can sort of understand that. If, if people raid because they want to see what these final bosses are like, they want to see what these amazing fights are all about, then that's why you raid. But when you turn it into an LFR environment, you're getting to see it all without any of the threat whatsoever. Without any of the threat whatsoever. Without any of the nights upon nights of of um wiping and all that kind of stuff so what's the trade-off the trade-off is loot you know you don't get great loot in lfr you get decent loot don't get me wrong you get very decent loot um but you don't get the, the better loot so if you do want to get the better loot if you do want to become a stronger character in game then you have to go into these these raiding environments but quite a few people to be honest with you not really bothered about that because you've got world drops you've got crafted goods uh, you got all these kind of stuff. Now in, in Warlords of Draenor, we have the catch-up mechanics. You have the items which you can attach to the crafted gear to take them from 644 to 655 to 665. And then you got the Apexis Crystal stuff, which you can buy a piece of Apexis Crystal gear. And then you can trade that in with some more Apexis Crystals. And trade that in with some more Apexis Crystals. So suddenly, non-raiders in Warlords of Draenor don't even have to do any raiding to still have a very competitive item level two raiders which is bananas absolutely badonkers so let's go to the very base point of this discussion is lfr becoming even more pedestrian well in Missa pandaria there were some not always by any stretch of the imagination you'd always think well there's absolutely no way we're going to wipe on this boss but in Missa pandaria there were some fights where there would always seem to be a mechanic to catch people out. 
uh, what is it called? Drum Dumna or Drumna, I, I can't remember exactly what it's called, from Throne of Thunder. When he went into the disintegration eye phase, oh my god, when I was streaming this kind of stuff, I used to take bets. Absolutely used to take bets on how many people were going to die during this phase. And more often than not, it was between 12 to 20. Seriously, no joke. Between 12 to 20 people in NFR would die. Problem was, of course, even when they died, even if you had one tank left, you'd still most likely uh, kill the boss. But there were times uh, where so many people would die that it would actually cause a wipe and it would actually cause some um, determination to come on. Here, nothing. I have yet to wipe on a single solitary boss in uh, LFR in Warlords of Draenor. I've yet to wipe absolutely on anything. On top of that, I think I've only spoken to one person, Minty Minute from, from Yogscast. I've only spoken to one person that has known any sort of wipage going on in FR. It just seems to be a ridiculous uh, pedestrian procession in Warlords. And you couple that with the catch-up mechanics for gear, and what recipe do you have? So let me know in the comments down below, LFR, is it now beyond too easy and they need to start bucking it up? That was the first Imperator fight I'd done. Logged on, we did it. No mechanics that seemed to catch anyone out. Whatsoever. You could AoE the single target ads. Um, I didn't even see a brand to pass around. Nothing whatsoever to catch any of the raiders out. And I personally think... That's a little bit too shite. So I hope you enjoyed the vid. If you did, do give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel. Follow me on social media and Twitch for live streaming. Those links are in the description below. And I'll be back with some more stuff very soon. You take care, everybody. Bye-bye.